Hello, I'm Sherry Jesse, and I'm thrilled to be presenting this pageant makeup seminar. We're going to be doing three different looks, starting off with your demure look that's great for interview, rolling on out into something that would be a look great for fitness and swimwear, and then amping it up for full-on glam for your gown series. Coming to you with more than two decades experience doing hair and makeup and numerous awards, including North American Editorial Stylist of the Year and Pageant Planet Top 10 Makeup Artist. I'd like to introduce to you my beautiful model, Emily Helton. And the first look we're going to be doing is getting you ready for interview. The first thing you want to do is start off with clean skin. I like to use makeup wipes just to be sure that your skin is nice and fresh and clean. And then after that, you're going to want to prime the skin. Now, makeup is individual. What you want to do, it's according to your skin type, what you need. There are various primers that you can use, whether you want something to make your, reduce your pores, or if you need extra moisturizing. So choose a proper moisturizer that suits your skin type. For you, I mean, Emily, you've got great skin, but I'm going to just give a little bit of priming with this. This is from IT Cosmetics. It's called Bye Bye Pores, because who wants pores, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and get a little bit of this. And like I said, it's according to your skin type. If your skin is dry, you definitely want to make sure that you use a moisturizer. Now, for pageant time and for photos I tend to steer away from sunscreens because they can give reflectivity in the camera and give you that ghost appearance but during the day when it's regular daytime always be sure and use your sunscreen makeup is an art form and just as with any artist there's no one way to paint your masterpiece. So what I'm going to be sharing with you today is the way that I like to do makeup and a great way of makeup that's going to suit Emily. But be sure to take all of these tips and tricks and use them to incorporate them into your own routine and make it your own. There's no wrong way to do makeup and really no right way. It's all about art and being creative and having fun. Now the most important thing that I feel like is that makeup is designed to make you look your best and to accentuate your best features. So with that in mind, you always want the makeup to make you look pretty, not necessarily like you have great makeup. Because in pageants and in interviews, you want the judges and in real life, everyone around you, you want them to look at you and your beautiful features, not necessarily your makeup. So the way we're going to approach the makeup, and especially for interview, is we're going to have a very light touch. In interviews, the judges are very close to you, and you don't want them to see heavy foundation and be distracted by your makeup. You want them to see your inner beauty. Now that we have the canvas primed, the first thing I like to get started with is the eyes, and I go ahead and correct the eyebrow shape. Now when you look at your eyebrows, Emily has amazing eyebrows, so she doesn't have a whole lot to do here, but we'll use a little bit of an eyebrow filler just to correct and tweak the shape. Now there's several ways that you can do it. You can use an eyebrow pencil, You can use an eyebrow balm, and you can also use a brown powder, like a brown shadow. This is one of my very own organizing makeup compacts, and it is a magnetic palette. You can open it up, and there is a full mirror that Emily could use to get ready herself. And this base is magnetic, and you can take your colors in and out. So I chose this, the colors in this palette just for Emily. 
and from season, one season to the next, you can change the colors out. And when you run out of something, you can just replace that one individual color. And this is a good color for your brows. You're going to want to use an angled brush, and this one right here has a very nice, fine tip to it. So we make little tiny strokes. I like working with this because it has a spoolie on one end. I can comb the brows up, and then I'm going to dip into my shadow right here and just slightly correct and fill in the brows using little tiny feathery strokes. So as I work here, maybe just slightly emphasizing the arch and then filling in any areas that are sparse. Now, after you fill in your brow shape is a good time to tweeze. Once you get your brow shape done, if you have any strays on the underneath, you can always tweeze then. It's very interesting that makeup is so trendy. And from one season to the next, one year to the next, and definitely one generation to the next, we have different brow trends. Now what we're seeing on trend for eyebrows are very healthy, full, natural looking brows. The next step we're going to be working with the eyeshadow and I love to prime the eyelid first. My personal favorite for a primer is this Urban Decay shadow primer and the color is called Eden. There are a lot of other primers. MAC has a good one. Often I get asked, should you buy your makeup at a makeup counter? Can you get things at a drugstore? Should you order a professional brand like Ben Nye? And you know, there's really no right or wrong answer. What I find these days is that the quality is consistent throughout, and you can find good things at pretty much just about any price point. So I'm working with this shadow primer, and this is a concealer brush, so the bristles are firmer and more close together. Tip back just a little bit. So where we did the eyebrow, we're going to go up underneath with our primer, and this will help to give a base for our eyeshadow and also help to define our eyebrow. The concealer brush allows us to get a nice even application. And this particular primer goes on with a matte finish, so really no powdering afterwards is necessary. Just taking careful, delicate strokes going up to the edge of Emily's eyebrow, and then filling in the entire eyelid. I like to take this primer in here and just under the eye where she has a little bit of redness and this helps to neutralize that redness and give a base for the makeup that will follow. Okay. As I'm working, I take my wipe and I always keep my brushes nice and clean. And when you do this, you want to push and flatten the edges and that way your brush stays nice and clean and it will last a long time for you. So I always take the time just to wipe off the brushes, keep them clean as I go. Now we're going to go in and do an eyeshadow. I like to begin with a nice soft champagne color and cover the entire eyelid. Now I'm going to use this right here. This is a nice um, kind of a fluffy soft brush and I'm going to choose this color right here. Kind of a sparkling champagne color is always good to provide your base shadow. And just work across the entire lid. So all the colors that we add afterwards will just glide smoothly over the top. Now we're going to go in with the crease color, and from this palette, I'm going to choose this right here. It's kind of a, like a rosy tan, and close, 
and just do a little bit of this color basically right in the crease line. Now open, let's see. So that just gives a little bit of color. Now remember we said that makeup is designed to bring out your best features. And what you always want to look for is symmetry. So get, go back and forth from side to side and make sure that you have your look balanced. I will reiterate the point. For your makeup look, you don't have to have a lot of color. It's just the right amount, perfectly placed. So what we have right here, just two eyeshadow colors. But this gives de depth and dimension to her eyes. Lighter colors make things protrude or give the illusion that they're coming out. And darker colors make them come in. So where we put that soft pink in the crease line, that accentuates the shape of Emily's eye. Now from that point, we want to go in and do some eyeliner. And I'm going to start off with a black. And believe me, you can get all kinds of colors. But I'm going to start off with black and then add eyeshadow to that. What I like to do is work with the Super Wear Gel pencil first and then smudge eyeshadow over it. So close your eye and we're going to go very close to the eyelashes. And here you can see a nice flat brush. And this one I actually, you know, I don't really name the brushes that I have. You can find good brushes all over the place. Uh, this one I actually got at the craft store. It's a paint brush for painting. But I love how I can go close to the eyelash line and smudge out my liner. I'll dip into this same purple and look up for me. Dust this very close to the eyelash line. And I'll do the very same thing on the opposite side. Working with our Super Wear Gel Liner across the lid and then going back in. Remember you're looking for symmetry, so don't be afraid to go back and add a little bit more from one side to the other. Alright, beautiful. It's my personal favorite to work with color when I'm doing eyeshadow, but don't be afraid to only work with neutral colors. That works as well. Beautiful shades of browns and coppers, those kind of colors work great on all eye colors. Now we're going to work with the eyelashes, and Emily's eyelashes are very straight, so we want to curl them. We're going to apply some mascara now, and I'm going to give you this one. This one will be yours. This is the Voluminous Butterfly Sculpt Mascara from L'Oreal. This is my personal favorite, but there are all kinds of mascaras out there, and you can experiment around until you find your favorite. But what you'll want to do is go very close to the lash line and zigzag up all the way out to the ends. Now the important thing when you're applying your mascara is that you want to make sure that you don't have any clumps. So you can always go back in afterwards with your spoolie and brush through just to remove any clumps because you want this to look natural. Once you've applied your mascara, you may decide that you want to apply false eyelashes. And false eyelashes are super popular these days and there are tons of types. So let me share a few of them with you. One thing you can do are individual lashes. And these go on one lash at a time. But this looks very natural. They also have individual lashes that come in little sets of threes. So this is a little more easy to put on. And especially if you want to maybe just add just a few to each end, this is a good option. Then you can also do strip lashes, and so many different companies are selling them now. You can get these at the drugstore or at the beauty supply, or you can order them from a company such as House of Lashes or Lily Lashes are some of my favorites. Even from one company, 
the styles vary from lash to lash. And I want to show two examples. This one right here is very bold. This would be good for evening for your gown. Whereas this one is, has a little more natural wispy effect. I think this will be perfect for interview. You definitely don't want to have super heavy lashes at interview. When you, they look at you, you want them to look at you, not like, whoa, look at those lashes. <laughs> when you're working with lashes, you're going to want to measure because sometimes they're made wider than what you need for your eye. So we're going to hold that right here. And then as I look and I can see the tip goes just beyond where Emily needs it. So I'm going to take scissors and snip that tiny tip off. Just like lashes, there are lots of kinds of eyelash glue too. This one's by Ardell, this one by Duo, and I really like one by House of Lashes. So find your favorite, and then we're going to put the glue on the lash and let it dry just a little bit until it gets tacky so that when you put the lashes on, it sticks right away. I like to take a little brush and paint that on the edge. And then once I'm finished, I wash my brush off right away. So we're gonna paint the glue along the edge, making sure you get enough on each end, and let's let that dry about 30 seconds until it's tacky. Just like the styles of lashes, the types of glue, there are also a lot of ways of putting them on. This is a tweezer for lashes, this is a tweezer for putting on lashes, or you can use your fingertips. Let's try our luck with this big tweezer. Close your eye. You're going to want to take the lash from the center and aim right for the center of your eye. Stick very close to the edge of the lash line and then put the corners in. Perfect, voila. Excellent eyelash application. Again, right from the center to the center of the eye, at the very base of your lashes, and then push the edges in tight. Open. Great. Oh, that's so pretty. I love that. Now sometimes, look up for me, sometimes you'll get a little bit of lashes stuck right here in the corners, and you can just pull that away. I like to keep everything nice and tidy as I go. This particular little pouch is just for eyelash stuff. If you keep your things organized, it keeps you from panicking, feeling like you don't know where something is. So organization is very important, especially when you're backstage at a pageant. That's one thing you don't want to have to worry with. Next, we're going to work into foundation. Now, some people like to do the foundation first and then go into eyes, but personally, I was trained by a New York makeup artist that does tons and tons of magazine covers and works with celebrities, and he trained me to do the eyes first. When you do that, if you have any eyeshadow fallout, you can wipe that away. And also, if you get your eyes looking good, your face doesn't look like you need as much. So again, we're going for a light application. So we're going to work into the foundation. Lots of options for this as well. Most often for photo shoots and for stage and for brides, I like working with an airbrush. And the brand I use personally is Tim2. And this is called AirPod. And the different colors pop on and off. And I chose this to match Emily's skin tone. Now sometimes our face is a little lighter than our body because we don't tan our face. At some point, it's good to kind of get balance between the face and your body. So I think this is going to be a great color for her. You can also work with a liquid foundation such as these right here. Or you can even find foundations in a cream formula. So again, it's up to you what kind that you like the best for the occasion. 
The benefit of using an airbrush is it goes on with a nice, smooth, even application. And so we're going to shake it up. And then I always apply a little bit to my hand first, and you can see it coming out. So this applies with a flawless finish. So when applying your airbrush foundation, since we've already done the eyes, I can use a spoon over her eye and avoid getting the makeup on the eye area. So turn that on, and then we put the spoon, and then I work in slight burst all around. And this helps to give a beautiful, flawless finish. Okay. Another method of applying your foundation, you can use a foundation brush or a damp beauty blender. And I like to mist mine down with a little bit of rose water. To get the right color of foundation, sometimes you have to mix two colors together, so don't be afraid to mix. Now you can see with a liquid foundation, the coverage is a little bit heavier than the airbrush, which is why I like the airbrush, because I prefer for it to look like you really don't have anything on. Just have flawless skin. So be sure when you're applying your foundation that you brush and brush or blend and blend. Use your beauty blender and pounce and pounce until you get that well blended. You want to make sure that you don't have any edges. Lift your chin up a little bit. There we go. We want to make sure we get that blended all the way out to the edge. Makeup is designed Foundation is designed to help even out your skin tone and cover up any blemishes. Now fortunately, Emily doesn't even have any blemishes, so we're not having to really put anything on, but we're going to give her just a little more even skin tone and kind of warm that skin up. So you may want to use a little bit of under eye concealer. Most of us have a little bit of darkness under the eyes and again different brands to choose from I really like this one from KKW and Tarte Shape Tape is also a fan favorite I'm going to apply just a little bit and again we don't want to look like we have a lot of makeup on we just want to present our best selves so I'm working with this little bit, it's kind of like an angled foundation brush and that helps us to really blend that out. That looks great, love that. This just lightens and brightens under the eye. If I have a little bit left over, kind of take it down through the center of the face where you want the most lightness and brightness. Now you say, do we want to powder? And again, the options are limitless. I've got a couple brands here, Laura Mercier. This one is Seal the Deal. KKW has a great one. There's so many different options to choose from when it comes to loose powders and you can also choose a pressed powder but that will help to really lock into place what we've done this is my personal favorite way of applying powder and especially to set that nice concealer that we just put on there i'm going to dip that into I'm going to dip my brush into the powder just lightly look up for me and then just lightly go under the eye and leave that to sit just for a few minutes. We're not going to do a long time of baking, but just a little bit will really help to set this look. Now the important thing while you're at a pageant, when you're doing your interview look, usually interviews are really early in the morning, so you're definitely gonna need your concealer at that point, right? Also, that is the look that you will wear on 
as you go for your rehearsals. And then in most cases, you're going to build your evening look on top of that. So we're going to get this foundation on and setting it nicely. And then later on, it's pretty much set it and forget it. So I just take this brush and just lightly brush off the excess. So now that we have the foundation and the powder and the concealer, we're going to add a little bit of rosy blush. This is one of my favorite shades right here. It's kind of a peachy pink. And I'm working with an angled blush brush that allows us as we go in with the color, and I always say dab, 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 just a little bit, and then dab, dab, dab right here from your apple of your cheek, and then dust it on back to your hairline. So that gives you a nice rosy glow. I'll work with this fan brush and that same champagne shade that we use for your eyeshadow and dust just a little bit on the high point of your cheek to give a nice glow on your cheekbone. Don't be afraid to use shadows for highlight, highlight for shadows, blush on your eyes. A lot of these colors you can use in an all-purpose fashion. Want to put a little bit of highlight there on your cupid's bow and down the bridge of your nose, just so you have a beautiful glowing complexion. Too many lip options to even choose from. All of these are liquid lips and they're long wearing. I love to use those and we already talked about when you get your interview look going, that has to last you for hours. So it's really good to start off with a liquid lip so it would be long lasting. These are nice neutral nude tones. So again, when you're going for your interview, they're just going to look at you and your face, not like, wow, that's bright red lipstick. So this is not the time for bright colors, okay? We're gonna go with something a little more natural. Let's try this color. This is by Macy and Mia. And it's kind of like a peachy pink. Well, maybe it's a little more orange. So let's add another color to it. Don't be afraid to mix and match your colors until you get the right shade. There's an, a lighter pink. And what I like to do is work with a lip brush. And then you can mix these two shades together until you get just the right color. Take your time doing your lip color, especially with your liquid lip. You want to get right on the edge of your lips, your natural lip, and sometimes just a tiny bit beyond if you want your lips to look a little bit fuller. This color will last you all day long. We will be applying a little bit of gloss over the top. Again, always keeping everything neat and clean. Keep my brushes clean. And let's go back in and add a little lip gloss to that. Now your liquid lip, when it dries like that, it's a matte finish and that will last all day. When you add a gloss to it, I would add this just before you go into your interview. So it looks nice and fresh. So we started off with the interview fitness look, and now I wanted to show you this look. It's an amped up. Perhaps the first interview could be for a teen. This is a more miss interview, I would say. So we're going off of that initial makeup, 
but what I want to do is increase the lip color and I've got some different lip shades here and I'm just going to get a little mix of these and then we will amp that up right over top of what you got here. This works if you're in a rush. You can just layer your colors, especially if you start off with your liquid lip. It's easy to add colors to that as the day progresses. So this would be a great fashion runway look, opening number look. We took the hair and tied it up into a, a fun high bun. Amp up the lip color. So we went in with the purple earlier. We'll still do that. Let's dip in here, this bright shade look up for me. And that beautiful pop of color just under the eye. I love it. So you don't have to do layers and layers of product. Sometimes just the tiniest bit of color makes all the difference. I love it. The next step, we're getting ready for the final part of the competition, and that is evening gown. And for that, you definitely want to have amped up glamour. Whether you're in teen or miss, you want to be glamorous. But still yourself, right? But with this, you have to think of the judges are farther away. The whole auditorium is big. So things have to be a little heavier and a little bolder than what you would for something that was close up like interview. So let's go ahead and go back to our palette. And we're going to amp up the eyeshadow. This is my personal favorite way of doing the color in the crease. So if you um, turn around and close your eye, I'm going to dip in. Let's start with this kind of taupe color right here. And then I'm going to hold the brush vertically and then sweep back and forth, kind of like a windshield wiper motion. So we'll go one side and we'll do to the other back and forth. Now let's add a little bit more color. Let's go in with this bronze color. Look how beautiful that is. And just kind of back and forth right in the crease. And what we do to one side, we'll do to the other. And I like to put it right there in the crease as well is right here on that little tiny bit. So almost like a V pattern. A little bit more color of the bronze right here. A little bit of the bronze right here. And because we have this gorgeous gold gown on, I think we'll add some gold color too. But let's go ahead and continue on with this look up for me. We've got some of that purple, but I'm going to go over that with this bronze color. And I'm going to do the same thing to the opposite side. Look up for me. I love to work with a shadow underneath the eye to help define the eye. Let's see. Very nice. And close again. Beautiful. Really intensifying this color. Adding layers of pigment. All right. Let's work from this palette right here. And uh, this is from Dose of Colors. And let's add some gold. I'm going to go in with my fingertip. Oh, wow. Close your eye. Let's add a little bit of gold. Beautiful. So this has a little bit of like sparkly metallic. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. I love working with sparkly metallics and glittery shades with my fingertip because you can get a more opaque 
application and you don't lose the glitter. Okay, open, let's see. Nice. So we're just going back and forth, adding layers of color. Let's take this tiny little brush and go in with this kind of bright shade right here. Look up for me. We're going to add a light, some glittery lightness here just to the tear duct in the inner eye. We'll take a little bit of this brown and intensify again in the crease with this pointed brush so I can get that very direct. Kind of back and forth, windshield wiper. A little bit in the underneath. Let's put some color in the waterline. And this shade is kind of gold, so we're gonna go along with that gold theme. Look up for me. Just hold down just a little. And this helps to complete that look by coloring in the waterline. Okay. For working with a cat, eye line. You can use a cream liner and a lip brush or you could use a liquid line. I'm going to work with a little bit of this Lux cream liner, a tiny brush, and close your eye and we'll go right along the top eye lash line to create a bolder eyeliner. Make sure we connect that. Beautiful. Other side. I love working with a lip brush for my eyeliner because it comes to a nice point and I can really get a good application. There's a little bit right here inside the eye. You want to make sure you look up and catch that part of your eye line. I'm going to work with a makeup wipe and very lightly catch any fallout that came onto under the eyes. Very lightly. Whenever you're going in with your eyeshadows, if you barely touch and barely touch, that keeps you from having as much fallout. So just very lightly touch your shadows. Let's go in and add a little bit more drama. I'm going to take this kind of red color, close. And so as a final kind of dusting step right here, add just a little bit of this. And this particular brush is very fluffy and that helps us to get a nice soft blended look. This is one of my favorites. It's from KKW Beauty and you can use this under the eye to get a little bit of brightness. Look up for me. So that also helps us to sweep away if we have anything under the eyes. And this is a nice final touch for a little bit of lightening and brightening under the eyes. And now let's go in and do a little contouring. There are a lot of ways you can do contouring. I've got a big palette right here with some highs and lows. This one right here is one of my favorites from Too Faced. It smells like chocolate. So mm. I love that. Let's work with that one. And I'm using just the tip of the angle of this brush and right in through there. So this will help to give the contour to the cheek. Corner of the hairline down toward the lip. And just lightly touch in and bring it down toward the lip. And then you can take a little bit of this and go up along the hairline. So this will also give you a little bit of bronzing color 
and you can even take your brush and go under your chin line. For highlighting, you have a lot of options too. Macy and Mia has an awesome palette here with all different colors of highlights. Woo! Then you can also use a strobing liquid. This one by Makeup Forever is really nice. Beautiful golden color. Or you could dip back into your shadow color and work with you know one of these colors that you have in your shadow palette. So it's up to you. I think we're gonna go all out and work with our Macy and Mia palette here. We already put a little bit of highlight, but let's do even more. Let's go. I'm going to work in with this golden one and just add right to the high point of the cheek and dust that right there. Oh gosh, that's so pretty. Can you see that highlight on camera? Let's dust down the center of the nose and a little bit onto the cupid's bow. And sometimes I like to dust in a little bit and get a little pink here too. From this point, we could add a little bit more blush, just a little more. Keeping in mind the stage, the lights, all that's a little brighter, you're going to need a tiny bit more. You have to watch though, I think, if your pageant is televised, you have to make sure that you're working with HD foundations and that you don't apply it too heavy because blown up on the big screen with HD TV, it really shows. So you still have to have a nice soft application, even for stage and TV. How's that looking? I love it. Beautiful. We'll add a little bit of mascara. You can layer your lashes or you can add just a bit of mascara to them just to help make them a little darker, a little bit thicker and that also helps to blend your lashes with your artificial lashes. Let's mix up another little lip color right here and do kind of like a dusty rose pink. Kind of like your own natural lip color, but a little better, a little bolder. You definitely want your lips to stand out, your eyes to stand out, and for your complexion to look flawless. I'm going to apply just a little bit of this. This is actually a liquid lip, but it's a shinier color, and we'll use this here in the center to create almost like an ombre look which gives the lips the impression of them being fuller. So we'll start off with a darker color and then go back with a secondary color which has a little bit of metallic. And I will list all of these products in the credits. So you guys, if there's anything that you wanna get, this will be in the credits. Let's intensify the brow just a tiny bit. Everything a little bit more dramatic for the gown portion. Let's do just a little bit of our highlight. 